Um, mixed music is, of course, changing. Rapid advances, if indeed they are advances in technology, ensure that electroacoustic music is constantly evolving due to changes in technology. In this talk, I'll concentrate on works which combine an instrument or instruments with recorded sounds. This qualification is important. In contemporary music, the proliferation of invented instruments or interfaces ensures that this mixed genre, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on, of electroacoustic music might include interaction with devices that are not traditionally recognised as instruments, or strictly speaking, as musical instruments. This will have consequences, of course, for any analytical investigation. And if analysis has any academic value, then it should be able to suggest techniques that can deal with any combination of resources, even those that are still in a state of uncertain evolution. In my view, mixed music is interesting precisely because it exemplifies an historical trajectory resulting from the essential features of what can be described as the technology music problematic. How do we use technology to create music? How are musical characteristics unlocked or revealed in sounds? Now, these are, in fact, issues that have, been, that have preoccupied instrument makers and composers for centuries. But because the instrument is so ubiquitous, its role is usually an accepted fact. In the case of mixed music, we're dealing with two distinct ways of producing and engaging with sounds. On the one hand, there are instruments which has, have already earned their place in the formation of musical thought. On the other, there are the recorded sounds, which can result from processed sounds, synthesised sounds, Indeed, the entire sound universe accessible to the electroacoustic musician. The former instruments already come burdened with, or if you prefer it, accompanied by a lengthy history of performance practice and analytical strategies. Consequently, an analysis of a mixed work must deal with instrumental techniques, including extended techniques, with which all contemporary musicians are familiar. By contrast, the recorded sounds invoke an entirely different set of performance practices. The one is live, real performers playing real instruments, making choices in real time. The other presents the listener with sounds in a relentless, unchanging succession. Viewed in this way, we might question why any composer would want to work with these two apparently incompatible fields of activity. But such a challenge is, of course, precisely why composers should want to compose mixed music. Instrumental sounds and techniques can, in a sense, be renewed by the encounter with electroacoustic music. The composer of electroacoustic music <coughs> must accommodate, in a critical manner, the particular subset of sounds that instruments create in addition to the necessary performance practices. The analyst then faces the challenge to account for and explain, or interpret, the nature of the interaction between the recorded sounds and the instrument, from the lowest structural level to the highest. Do the instrumental sounds elaborate, extend, comment on, initiate, even if apparently, the recorded sounds? Does the musical meaning reside in the conflict between the fixed recorded medium and the instrumentalist? There is, of course, no need for a composer to resolve <coughs> such creative oppositions. The work might conclude in an unresolved state, leaving any questions the analyst might pose unanswered, because, ultimately, they are unanswerable. For example, let us briefly investigate one issue. Many musicians regard the real-time modifications of sound events, expressive timing in other words, as constitutive of music, of a music performance indeed. How can this be negotiated within the context of a fixed tape? Uh, tape in inverted commas, it could be because... A digital medium there. Uh, the tape cannot be altered in tempo in real time, but tempo variation can be suggested by the recorded sounds. However, this can never really be achieved in the manner of the orchestral accompaniment in the concerto, for example. In such cases, we apply the criteria of performance practice to recorded sounds. Indeed, how could it be otherwise in a genre that must draw on practices of both studio composition and instrumental performance? Here, of course, the situation is changing, and this must be acknowledged by the analyst. I can easily envisage a situation where a fixed recording is replaced by a laptop with samples that can be played in a coordinated fashion with an instrumentalist. Therefore, if a musician decides to slow down or dwell on a particular passage, it will be possible. If not to follow them precisely within sections, 
but at least to ensure the entry of the next, <coughs> that the next section can be delayed until the soloist reaches that point in the score. The score. Yeah, I'll return to that in a minute. In such cases, I believe a useful analytical question would be how this flexible fixed dualism dealt with by composers and performers playing works with fixed taped sounds. And what are the differences in musical language and performance practices when using sampled sections that accommodate even partially some degree of expressive timing? Or should the composer refuse to assimilate his instrumental practices into electroacoustic techniques and celebrate the differences? These are, in my view, analytical questions that concern not only the low level of basic coordination, but of structural thinking itself. Let me very briefly illustrate the analytical problems that I would find interesting in a mixed work. I have uh, a work by uh, Nono in 1976 called Soferte con de Serene, which is piano and tape sounds. Thus, we can say it's a traditional tape work. And it's considered by a tape mixed work and is considered by many the first composition of Lono's late style. It is, furthermore, a work that personally I've admired for a long time. The interaction between the piano and the tape is intimate. The recorded sounds are derived from piano sounds. By referring to the score, and of course there is a score, we see that Nono uses, albeit sparingly, techniques which can be described as extended. Therefore, there are, for example, clusters, those are used quite sparingly. The piano's timbral unity is fractured due to these techniques as much as the presence of the recorded sounds. <coughs> there is no real sense of opposition as such. Um, uh, with an instrument such as the piano, it would be possible to analyse the pitch and rhythmic contents of the piano part. But, as far as I can tell, there's no score for the tape sounds. Contrast this with conductor, for example. There is only a tape, or a CD, to facilitate coordination with the eight sections as indicated in the piano score. Thus, slight digressions between pianist and the recorded sounds, both of which play continuously to all intents and purposes, are inevitable within the framework of specific time points of simultaneity. Furthermore, the instructions indicate that two loudspeakers should be placed immediately behind, or even beneath the piano, to, and I quote, confuse the sound coming from the tape with that coming from the piano. The scrupulous attention uh, uh, paid to piano resonance created by the types of pedaling and careful adjustments of the tape's dynamic level ensure that this work is a real partnership between the recorded sounds, whose dynamic levels are controlled by the tape operator, the pianist, and, of course, the resonant characteristics of the performing space. I should add that the score requests that the tape operator be, and I quote again, preferably a musician. That begs a lot of questions. In such a description, I have, already, I, have I believe, already started to ask analytical questions. What is the role of space and resonance within this work? How do the various elements, piano, recorded sounds, venue, interact? Do they support? Do they oppose each other? Do they fluctuate between those extremes? What are the consequences for Nono's music in general? How does the level of the single sound, pitched or complex, relate to higher structural levels? Such an investigation should lead to a more informed understanding of the work by means of its intrinsic materials and formal properties. Pierre Schaeffer declared that we all carry a music-gauging machine around with us. Our ears. I would agree, but only if our ears are supported by interpretation, which is in turn prompted by asking pertinent questions. Thank you.